And then he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. I can't catch a break, guys. Yeah. Get them the fuck away from me. I can't I can't be around those guys. People think, oh well, cleaning your room, that's just a cliche. It's like, yeah, really, eh? Just go ahead and try it. If people had any idea how powerful sleep is for healing from anything, and the fact that it's free. My mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Fight and Fit Show. This week, we're going to cover things that are important to you as it pertains to health and fitness and achieving your goals. Obviously, that's what we do on a week-in, week-out basis. We're going to kick things off with an absolute stunner, in my opinion. Something, as somebody who's been in the health and fitness industry about nine to ten years, all right, taking it seriously, about three, all right, is protein really that important? You bet your fucking ass it's important. But the question is why? And the question is why did you not know that already? All right? You being the plural you sitting there not actually knowing this. All right? So again, like if you're sitting there and you're thinking like, I know the guys are always chatting on, hit your protein, hit your protein, hit your protein. But why are we saying that? It's such nauseam. One of the cool things that I started trying to do lately is that if there's somebody who is in a position where I respect them, they have results that I want, that if they say something ad nauseum, I'm not going to let it become white noise. And that's something that I do all the time. You know, it's like it's very easy for us to hear these amazing pieces of advice, but so much so that it become white noise and, you know, they kind of lose their meaning. So I challenge you to, you know, take on the same thing that I did, which is, you know, things that you maybe um, are very, very used to, ideas that seem very, very commonplace to you now. It's like start reanalyzing them again and start thinking, okay, right, well, why is this such a, a cliche? Hello, Chris. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm good. Thank you very much for welcoming me. Do you um, end, end, end that and say, what do you think? Uh, yeah, so like, well, why is, I think we should talk about why protein is so important because it is very, very important. Um, is it very important? Yes, it's very important. If you are not taking adequate amounts of protein, your progress will be slower. Um, you won't see, like when your pro- progress is slower, you're not getting as much from each of your workouts. So like all of your effort that you put in the gym just doesn't give the same result. Uh, so if you hit your protein, you start seeing muscle building a lot quicker. You start recovering faster. You're not as sore from your workouts. Um, and I think if you really want to stay maximally motivated, you want to make sure you're getting the maximum results and the most reward for your effort. And if you do that, you will be more consistent. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's exactly it. It's like if you're not seeing the result, how would you be in any way motivated? And so you know, you don't want to fall into that cycle whereby you're going through the motions with your training, and you just expect. What would you say? What's that word? Baseline? Oh, baseline maybe yeah maintenance like just kind of like where 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 you're just going through the motions and nothing's really changing for you it's like that is the exact well it's not the exact opposite of what we're trying to achieve like i suppose you know if you're maintaining your your progress i mean that's at least something but that's not why you signed up people didn't sign up and go oh hey listen i just want to stay where i'm at it's like you want to get better and protein is like Protein and sleep, you know, again, protein, sleep, calories, like, I mean, like, is that it? And obviously, you know, nutrition, stuff like that, but it's like, we're talking, like, what is, what is at the crux of it is, like, if you're not recovering from your sessions, how are you supposed to fortify the muscle tissue in order to do more? It's like, you give your body stimulus, it's like, oh, we're breaking down at 12 reps, the amazing machine will go, cool, let's get more out of the tank, and that just might be 12 and a half, you know, on its way to 13, but it's like, you know, it's like, that's... The name of the game and obviously the the higher up the, the ladder you go the smaller those gains are going to be the probably more wise you're going to be and aware that that is the case but early on it's like the gains are huge and that's such an important opportunity to understand the relationship between training nutrition and progress and if you've hit your first plateau you know it could be the case that you know those initial gains just from taking on the training aren't uh, gonna cut it anymore and so it's like okay well, what is the next big thing the next big thing is 
a step forward with your nutrition and protein is in my opinion the best place to start because most people probably aren't hitting a fitness amount of protein in their pre-fitness life and then taking that diet into their fitness life um, isn't gonna isn't gonna cut it okay so in quick bullet points why is uh, protein important in the context of fat loss me well i i have the answers right here but if you want to jump in and take no, it no no you go you go you have them okay. right down okay so first off um it helps control your appetite all right if you have a bowl of cereal uh, with no pro- minimal protein in it or whatever you could eat i would say very very easily um a thousand to 1300 calories worth of um cereal if it's like so something super super delicious like cheerios or a uh, crunchy nut or something like that there unbelievable but you even crave like you can eat a whole bowl of crave and or a whole box of crave almost in one sitting and um, because there's very very little protein in it but if you were to have let's say 1300 calories worth of chicken breast or minced beef or steak or something out there you'd be hard pressed to eat it and um, you might be able to but would you really want to uh, i don't really think so so if you add like a portion of protein to any meal it will be more satiating you will stay fuller for longer and you'll just feel a little bit more satisfied from your meal and um, now the protein it doesn't necessarily have to be animal protein it can be vegan protein it can be like you know your chia seeds and all that sort of stuff uh, but animal protein in our experience is best and uh if you are vegan or vegetarian or anything like that there and it's only because you think it's healthier i would strongly recommend you take a wee break from it and you start eating some some steak uh, and then on top of that as well it also has the highest thermic effect out of all uh, foods so just in general it does change for uh, from food to food like from chicken to beef and all this sort of stuff but the thermic effect food if you eat let's say a hundred calories worth of chicken breast 40 of those calories are going to go towards digesting that food itself. So you're only really intaking about um, about 60% of the calories. Uh, another one on top of that as well, not just with protein, but with fiber, it's very, very similar. So if you're eating a uh, fiber, uh, like high fiber bread or something like that there, the fiber not only is good for health plans and your digestive tract and all that sort of stuff, but it's also really, really good because you're like, if you have the calories for carbohydrates are four calories, program but if you're eating a high fiber variation of it more than likely it says four calories per gram but really only getting two calories per gram because the other two calories are fiber and they're indigestible so they're actually going the whole way through you which is really really cool too so term effect food and high fiber so if you combine uh, basically your high protein um foods with high fiber foods well then you're like <laughs> you're on a roll now are high fiber foods the best for pre-workout and all that sort of stuff no you want like high glycemic index foods which will like spike your blood sugar and help get the carbohydrates to your muscles so you can utilize it for energy uh, but if you're not and you're like post-workout and you just want to sort of have a slow release steady burn of energy your high fiber foods would be really good um, Next. and then with there we, we have other ones for muscle growth and repair Okay, so um, when you have adequate amounts of protein, the protein is broken up into amino acids. Those amino acids are the building blocks of the proteins that help repair and build your muscles. If you've ever seen uh, any of <laughs> what protein does inside your body is absolutely insane. It's ridiculous. And how the little um, amino acids and the little like protein machines that walk around your body to help build stuff back up is absolutely incredible and if you don't give it what it needs that happens way less and you don't recover as much and your body will take it from other places so like if you don't have adequate amounts of calories or carbohydrates or anything like that your body will strip down your muscle and use that muscle later to help build it back up after you've already broken it down so you end up so in this sort of um you know, like Joe, you, know, you you give yourself the stimulus to grow it, but the resource you're using to grow it is actually being taken away, and then you're building it back up with the resources that you just took away. Uh, but if you have the adequate amounts of protein in you, well, then basically it'll help build it back up. Yeah, one of the big things I see an awful lot of time with people in that position is actually it's not even just like flatlined. I say it all the time. It's like it's injury. You know, it's like I see an awful lot of, oh, now I've got a niggly shoulder. It's like, you know, obviously injuries happen as part of kind of fitness anyway. You know, it's like <clears> when you're pushing your body to limits, you're going to get little tweaks and twinges. And obviously it varies in, in extremity depending on how wise you're being with listening to your body or, you know, maybe how good your cool down was. Anyway, the point being that even if you're just going through the motions and just gently, like, you know, challenge yourself a little bit, but it's still par for the course of what you've been able to do for the last eight it's like you know injuries are still going to occur because as you said like you're if you're not giving yourself the tools to recover it's like well we're breaking down something 
you know, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and it's only so long. And then before. imagine, Joe, you're not hydrated, and then you're also underslept. Joe, so you're not even thinking that clearly as well. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot to it, and you're in a massive calorie deficit. So, you know, like, you need to be careful with careful with that. You're right. You're exactly right. And Joe, you do break down your your tissues do break down. Your tendons will break down. It's not necessarily the best idea in the world. It's one of and the one adequate amounts of protein Sorry, that happens with less. Sorry, it's interrupt. Yeah, you're okay. And th- this is one of the reasons why I love health and fitness, and I think it's such so important for many many people. And when you listen to successful people, one of the big things that they focus on first is fitness. And like you know, this health and fitness industry, you know, it's like trying this whole maybe not health and fitness industry, your health and fitness journey, you know, it's like really becoming competent at this kind of stuff is super, super important just for you as a person in general. Are you sleeping well? Are you hydrating? Are you looking after yourself? Are you in a routine? Are you planned? Are you prepared? Are you invested in the right things? It's like, it's really, really, really important that you get this stuff right. Yeah. Well, when you do, the people who do, do way better in terms of getting results and they look better, they have more energy, they're more vibrant, they're a bit more of a glow about them, a little bit more of a, a pep in their step. And because of that extra pep in their step, you know, more enthusiastic about the workouts, they're making more progress and it's just like a little upward spiral for them as opposed to being t- showing up tired all the time, not having the adequate amounts of protein, getting injured, picking up niggles, you know, uh, it's just the workouts, the performance isn't the best, they're not getting the most out of each one. And then they're playing it on safe mode because you really don't have that excess energy to expand. Um, are there any other supplements that you'd recommend? Like a, so, that's actually, it. wait that's there, wait there. Before we go into pro- other supplements, let's talk about protein. So, protein first. Good sources. Um, whole foods are number one. Whole foods are number one. We want chicken. We want beef. Uh, we want pork. We want um steak. We want all of the main the main sort of sources of protein. Okay. But then let's say you ha- you struggle to eat that. So you have three meals a day. You don't really have time to have four or have your little lunch box with, lunch box with your extra portion of protein. So what you can do is you can supplement uh, and you can supplement with whey protein or beef isolate. They're re- both really, really good source of protein. They're not as good as, let's say, a whole food, but they're good enough to do the job. So if you have 30 grams of protein at breakfast, 30 at lunch, 30 at dinner, that's 90 grams of protein plus 20 grams, that would be 110. That would be your minimum standard of protein for the day. Now, all you have to do to increase that, if you want to make it a lot easier to increase it, is instead of having 30 grams of protein at each meal, increase the portion sizes of your protein so that you're hitting about 45 grams of protein at each meal. These meals will make you more full and they will keep you fuller for longer. Uh, but instead of hitting 90 grams of protein from Whole Foods, you'll be hitting 90 in the first two meals, and then you'll be hitting 130 by 135 by your third meal, and then you have another. Um, if you have another protein shake after that, you'll be sitting about 150, 155 grams of protein, which is you know, for anyone, even if you're you know, between 60 and 85 kilos, you know that's plenty of protein. Uh, to do it. You're in, the heavier you are, that would be more towards the lower end. The lighter you are, that would be more towards the higher end. Uh, but I don't think you need much more than 155 grams of protein. This is, like, this is, this is the real issue people have. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's obvious, maybe it's not so obvious. Some people say, but this is the real challenge. It's like most people just don't want to overeat with the right stuff. Because it's hard. It's very, very hard to plan your meals, get three square meals a day, some of which there is, like, again, like, is it, is it that hard? Uh, listen. Like, it wait is. there, relatively, relatively it's hard. For someone who's never done it, it's hard. But when you actually know what to do um, and you're not eating for convenience anymore, because I think a lot of people have set up their lives so that eating for convenience is, like, that's how they do it and it solved the problem for them. It worked for them um, up until they started getting fat and started getting loads of weight and Joe you know, started losing energy and all this sort of stuff and realized that, you know, meal prep saves you time it doesn't take more time it actually saves you time but you know there's a little bit of front-end effort that is needed and you know that effort seems like oh it's going to take ages compared to going to the shop and getting a wrap you get like that's the sort of thing we're doing or just heating up something in the microwave you know like that's the sort of convenience that we're dealing with here and i think that's the main reason people eating for convenience um is the main reason why they're not uh, hitting their or why they're not eating fully balanced nutritious meals and all that sort of stuff because their lives are set up in a way that they have to eat uh, conveniently. 100%. And, and a big reason is to, one of the reasons people like convenience is not always laziness. It's literally sometimes to do with the fact that they're super busy. And so that's one thing I would say. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it really is hard to, you know, sit down and eat big meals that you've prepared 
on a consistent basis. I know everybody can do it today, tomorrow, the day after, but it's that grind. It's that consistency. And people struggle with consistency and people struggle with consistency in lots of things, especially in things that aren't easy to do. Like for toxic, it's like there has been many a times when I was super committed where I found myself, it was like eight or nine o'clock and I'd love to sit down. I was like, oh, fuck, I have to go make her a meal. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I, I, I was really busy in the early part of the day. You know, time got away from me with the kids, this, that, and the other. I managed to got a big breakfast at work and I managed to get a good dinner when I got home. I, I, I got a supplement snack in between, but ah, I'm still short. You know, it's like, and so, and a lot of people will phone it in and call it a day. And I know I've done that myself, but you know, it's like, well, think, think about it this way. Okay. Like, let's say that's, a, that's the problem you have. You, you're going to have to eat anyway, right? Right? <laughs> right? You're going to have to eat anyway. What, what Are you talking about at 9 o'clock at night in that situation? Yeah, well, like, so you're, you're under your calories, whatever it is. You're, you're feeling hungry. You know, like, no, I'm if, not. if you're in a... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, let's say you're just trying to build muscle. You're just trying to build muscle. So are you under your calories? No. You're not under your calories? No, I'm at maintenance. Yeah, you're under your goal, your target calories. I'm under my target calories, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, apologies. So you got you got to have like you you got to have the calories in so like somehow. So like what what do you no, have? No, that's my point. No, I don't. I could just call it a day and fuck it and say, oh, I'm gonna give it a miss today. Two thousand calories, one hundred ten grams of protein. Leave it there. Yeah. No. Like you. What do you mean? You can't just leave it. But I know you're saying that now. But the temp- it's nine o'clock at night. I've had a long day. I'm up for work at five in the morning. I have to go to bed an hour. This is my last hour. And okay. Then after yeah. That- all right, all right. Yeah, well, like here's how you solve it. Okay, full fat milk, one scoop of whey protein, half a banana, tablespoon of peanut butter. I already, had, butter. That. I already huh? had it. I already had it. Too bad. You got another one. Oh, I was really done. But again, again, I'm not. I'm just saying, I'm not. I'm not complaining. I'm saying even that. I'm not complaining about having to make a fucking full three course dinner. I'm just saying, it's like even that. It's like you know, I'd rather just have a cup of tea and a bag of crisps, and then I have to go protein mode again like generally it's like for people that but maybe... wait 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 you'd rather just have a cup of tea and a packet of crisps yeah how committed to this process are you man i uh, listen i listen i had the fucking i had what you said i'm doing it i'm just saying i know i know i know people like that i know what i used to be like yeah, but wait there, like I, we can, like at the same time, you can't you can't just justify, um, let's say behaviors that take you away from your goal. You can't just start justifying that just because you're you're feeling lazy or because you're like it's understandable. But you also have to understand that, like, if you keep that up, you're going to end up back where you started. Listen, you're preaching to the choir here, kid. I know. I'm just playing devil's advocate advocate for you. You know. So what would you? So we have a client. They come into you. They've just exp- they've just confessed this major sin. Uh, what do they? What do you say to them? Well, I would say so. My first bit of advice would be: it's like you want to be proactive. Is what you'd want to try and do. Is like we don't want to be left in that situation again if we can help it. Is like we want mm-hmm. to make sure that the day is already planned out. Because again, in that situation, you know that stays for me normally. The day wasn't Wednesday. planned out. Yeah, didn't plan it out. It's not not my usual routine. Things went a bit haywire, and so trying to get ahead of the day the night before. Going, what, what am I doing tomorrow? What does success look like tomorrow? And then we can step in with, even if it's a haphazard plan, it's better than no plan. You know, mm-hmm. uh, or again, just if, like, again, it doesn't take that long, especially if your MyFitnessPal um, database is already kind of up to date. It's like, it literally could take four minutes. Bop, 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 bop. That's the more plan. Mm-hmm. So again, that's my, that would be my first thing. It's like plan ahead, get proactive, don't be stuck it's in that too late, wait there. It's too late to plan ahead. That's good proactively, but if you'd already planned ahead that day, we wouldn't be in this situation. So what do you do? You're you in the said, situation, Brian. You're just you finished, said, you're only sitting you, there just fucking No! No, you said a client came in and they're after saying this to me. You said this, yeah. no, we're we're after the fact. We're, yeah, we're, what do I do in that situation, Brandon? Oh what do you oh what do you do in that situation? Oh yeah. sorry, apologies. All right, well, what do you do in that situation? I hate that. It's like I wasn't prepared. I feel like I'm not going to be prepared in the future. I'm going to be caught my pants around my ankles again, and I'm just going to be stuck craving the tea and biscuits in the evening. Sure, wait, what, like, wait. what should I do first? You have to be disciplined. No, you have to, you have to, you have to have success as convenient 
as that. So again, yeah, as yeah. you said, yeah, it has to be convenient. It's like if, if you're busy, you know you're going to be busy, you know things are always going to be on top of your head, you have to have go-tos that are just as convenient as a bag of crisps. Yeah, so convenience needs to be important because, again, we're all fucking super busy. Western world has screwed us over with our 9 to 5 and all this sort of stuff and all our social uh, commitments and all this sort of stuff where, you know, it's, it's hell. You know, we it really is. It's so horrible. It's horrible. Um, I'm not, <laughs> not enjoying it. Uh, too much too much sugar, too much good stuff. Um, but what I think, I think if you have you know, a go-to meal that's really, really easy, it's not hard to make. Joe, you know, scrambled eggs takes literally five minutes. It's not hard. So you know, at the same time, it would take you to boil the kettle and have your cup of tea as well. If you want to have something actually, uh, something actually substantial, you don't well, have to have know eggs if you today, have. Chris. I already you have eggs. eggs today. Do, you a, do you have a protein bar? No, no, I don't like do that. Weigh protein. Honestly, I'm yeah. telling you, protein shakes no, solve, solve nearly I do. everything. I do have weigh protein. So I know you do have weigh protein. Do you have any milk? I do. Yeah, I do have milk. Do you have a blender? Ah, oh, it's too loud. The kids are asleep. Don't care. <laughs> The kids are asleep, Chris. The blender, I doubt the blender I doubt the blender is going to wake them too much. And if it does, I've got a protein shaker. I've got a protein shaker. Well, shake it, shake it, but it's not as good. That's all I'll say. Have your wee protein in a protein shaker. But then you have to clean it out and all this sort of stuff. Just blend it, boom, rinse it. Do we clean the blender? Do we clean the uh, blender? I feel like you're been... If, I, you're wait been there, ridiculous. wait there, right? Protein shakers, protein shakers are way worse than a, a little quick convenient blender. Here's why, okay? Usually what happens with the protein powder, people will either put their water in or their milk in, and then they'll put their protein in, or they'll put their protein in, and then they'll put their milk in. If they're new, more than likely you're gonna make the egregious mistake of putting in the whey protein first, and then uh, the milk on top of it, and then shaking it, true. and then they have to scrub the pretty dusty dry bits in at the bottom, and you never get it all out 100%, and uh, it's just gonna stink it up, it's gonna be real bad, okay? But if you have a blender, and you fill your blender up, just with your with your milk or your water, your oat milk, your almond milk, whatever you really have, and then you put one scoop in, and then you go blitz. That mixes it all up way, way, way better. If you put it in ice, it makes it mixes it up even better. And then you pour it out while it's all like wet and all that sort of stuff. Rinse it immediately, wet. immediately. So then you just set all you set it to dry. You down your shake. You rinse the container immediately, and then you're good to go. Done. Dusted. I feel like you made a big deal of that. Here's what I do, right? Put my milk in my shaker, put my fucking two and a half scoops in, shake it up, throw it in the dishwasher, get over it, Chris. Oh, you have a dishwasher. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, also, guys, um, I'm not sponsored, but I really do feel like, in my experience, the My Protein plastic shaker is the greatest shaker in the entire world. Now, minus any maybe fancy shakers with some cool accessories that, that make over the top. But the My Protein plastic, for whatever reason, is a non stink plastic. Like non every stink. protein, non stink. Every plastic I've ever, every protein shaker I've ever had after about a week or two just gets that protein stink on it. And for whatever reason, the, the, the plastic from My Protein is like they've nailed it. It's like it doesn't, it doesn't absorb any of that. And so you literally just wash it clean every single time. That was a big game changer for me for protein shakes because the stink put me off big time, like big mm -hmm. time and reasonably so. Um, so that's tip of the day. Okay, so now that we've talked about whey protein and how amazing it is and how it can help you hit your protein targets. Um, in the area of meal prep, something that I would highly recommend that you do is you take a wee journey onto TikTok or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts and you look up some meal prep uh, hack videos or meal prep like short form videos. Uh, they will give you the uh, all of the ingredients, teach you step by step how to make the meals and then how to prep them and all that sort of stuff as well. And usually they're all really high protein to give you some really, really cool ideas. It's fun to make them. And once you make them twice, you have them in your repertoire. You know how to make them. They're, they're in your go-to things. And then once you have your meal prep sort of sorted, I recommend you get a slow cooker because it's a set and forget kind of thing. You just go chop, 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 chuck, turn on, walk away. You come back four hours later, put it into your wee containers and have one there, there and then. And then you're good to go. Um, but take a, wee, take a wee trip onto uh, TikTok lane and you'll find some really cool ideas. Uh, any rec Anyone that you recommend? So number one, <laughs> I recommend Zach Chug. He's really good. Yeah, Steeler. Huh? 
You're a stealer. Hey, you stole him from me. I told you about him first, okay? I don't think so. No, Shona, Shona and Peter told me about him. I I have was following this guy like two years, all right? All right, Chris. All right, well, great minds. Any any other ones? No. Is it Aussie no. guy? Oh, Chris, you said no. <laughs> yeah, Aussie Fitness, he's another good one. Yeah, I don't know. But again, all you have to do is find find a guy that resonates with you if someone does it. They do them way better than we can. Okay, that's their full time job. I know. I know. Doing all what that. I'm what I'm thinking about doing as a series now is just finding my best recipes, giving them full credit, and just making them because I couldn't be arsed trying to come up with better recipes. Because do they fucking exist? I don't even know. There's one guy, Chris, and what he does is his whole shtick is cottage cheese, right? And blends up cottage cheese to make it smooth essentially and the macros on cottage cheese are I out had of this some world this morning. i had some this morning yeah, there you go and so again like any kind of cream based dish, dish that you like can be cottage cheesed to um you know make be, fitness, be, be fitness friendly yeah 100 percent. insane yeah. it's like like the, there's people out there who have solved your problem 10 times over made a smacky video and uh, and 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 you know, a whole fucking series. Like they're like the information that's out there is absolutely insane. And the fact that you don't know about this and you're just hearing about it now is not a bad thing at all. But the fact that if if for after today you're stuck right is after listening to this, like you 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 have a leg to stand on. So yeah, Zach Chug and uh, Aussie Fitness, very, very good ones. Again, both of them used to be kind of fat and they turned their lives around just through high protein meals. Again, you already make meals. It already takes time to make dinner. If you order a Domino's, it takes fucking 30 minutes to get there anyway. If you have the food in your fridge, it's good. The main thing is that you're meal prepping and you have your shopping done. How do you shop? What's the best way to do it? Number one, have a shopping list, okay? Have like a shopping list so you know what you need. But yeah, all right, if you don't know what you need, you're not going to get it. So to know what you need, you need to have a few ideas of the meals that you're going to have. Here's how you break it down, okay? You pick your protein. Pick your carbs, pick your fats, okay, for your meals. Then you need, let's say, for dinners, you need five sources of protein. For breakfast, you need five sources of protein. For uh, lunches, you need five sources of protein. That, so you need 15 portions of protein for the week. That's what you need, okay? Portion of protein is anywhere from 100 grams of uh, chicken up to 150 grams of chicken. So you need anywhere from a kilo to a kilo and a half of protein to help you with your 15 portions uh, throughout the week. All right. Or sorry, that'll be 10. A kilo to two kilos. Do the maths for me correct there. Okay. What is that? For 15 well, portions of protein. At 100 grams a piece, it's 1.5. Yeah, but then what if it's 1.5? It's 1.5. 1.5 times 15. 150. If it's 150, is, what's is 150 it, times 15? Is it 2.5? I don't know. <laughs> my maths is bad. If I, if I just posted my calculator, well, gone. Uh, I'm gone. My phone to stream. All right, Brian's gone. He's going to do some quick maths for us. Uh, but anyway, you don't necessarily need that. You might only need five. So go on. Oh. He's frozen. Anyway, you might only need five uh, because you'll have, let's say, a different portion of protein for lunch, a different portion for dinner. So, like, let's say, you know, 500 grams of mince or let's say, what is it, Brandon? 2.25 kilo. Or 2.25 kilos. Uh, that would be for 15, right? But you might need, Count them stairs. Say, 500 grams of chicken if you want 100 grams of chicken at your five lunches. Then, let's say, um, 500 grams of mince or... I usually get 800 grams of mints, uh, and that will do me for my dinners because my pro portions of protein are a little bit higher. Um, and then maybe some eggs for your breakfast. That's how you sort of do it. You pick your protein for breakfast, you pick your protein for lunch, you pick your protein for dinner, and then that's it. That's your protein for the week. If you want to do it for three days or for four days, it depends how long you can stand your food like going off in your fridge. Uh, <laughs> so Or just, just do it or do whatever the fuck you want and get whatever results you want. Who cares? Who cares what we say? Listen, we won't be doing this nine years. Don't stress. Honestly, just shop whatever way you want. Just don't get any food that's high in protein. Just eat cereal for breakfast. Uh, uh, go out for lunch. Go to your favorite restaurant for lunch and just order whatever meal deal they have. Dinner. Don't worry about dinner. So whatever's in the freezer there will do you. And snacks. Sure, listen. 
Chris. Okay, wait. Actually, one quick point. One quick point to make on this. Okay, see the way... If you have that attitude that Brandon has just described, if you have that, just ask yourself this question, okay? Genuine, like, genuinely ask yourself this question, okay? Do I have a fixed or do I have a growth mindset around this topic, okay? If you have a fixed mindset, all right, you're not going to change. You are not going to change. You're period. probably not listening to this podcast at this point. Like, period. You're just not going to change. You're not going to make progress. So, number one adopt the growth mindset and make some effort give yourself permission to do it badly you do not have to do it perfectly do it really badly the first week and then do it better next week and then do it a little bit better next week and then get lazy and quit for a week and then go oh shit i need to get back to this and then do it better again and then all of a sudden out of a month you have three uh, weeks that are done really really good versus no weeks that are done really really good and that is a consistent effort to change even though you so weren't what? perfect because no one's perfect one thing I would say is if you really if you really want to get moving, if you're really not sure, you need a you need a pain point and a dream. All right, mm-hmm. you need something. It's like if it, the pain point normally comes first. It's like you Describe hit something, it. you see a picture of yourself, your belly's hanging over the table. Ah, that's not me, is it? Ah, you're a photo. Or your little niece or nephew will come up and start poking you in the belly, being like, "Why are you so fat?" Yeah, 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 or a. Or again, like all of a sudden, you're like, oh, why am I walking around my belly yet? Oh, wait a minute. That's my belly. All right. Or you yeah, lift you, see a you, photo. You, you lift up your top of the room full of people, and then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, you pull it back down. And again, whatever it is, whatever moment you have, normally it's a moment. You know, normally, yes, we live in misery, and yeah, it's annoying a lot of the time, but that's pretty sub the surface for the most part. It's normally a spike, an incident or an event that happens that kind of makes you a little bit more emotional than normal. And that is what um, kind of gets you, all right, no, something's got to change. But then what you need is you need a vision. You need a very, very, very strong, powerful vision. And what you want to wait to say of the future, of what it's what is it actually going to be. And it, you don't want hope. Hope, get rid of hope. Never mind hope. You want actual belief. Like, oh, I hope, it, oh, I have fingers crossed. It's like, no, this is happening. One of the things I was talking about with one of my clients there is like, if I said to you, right, let's say your goal is to lose a stone. Let's say it's to get abs. Let's say it's to get a big bloody chest, whatever it is, right? Get a vein in your bicep. If I said to you in six months time, I'll be back and I'm going to give you no further information. All, right, all you have is the information you have now. I give you 10 million. I'm going to slide a cool 10 million across the table. Change your life, change your family's life. What would you do? And it's like you have the information to hand. You, you know what to do. It's a lack of inspiration at this stage. It's a lack of commitment to the process. It's a lack of belief, a belief that it, it, it could actually be the case. And so, like I said, you would, in the morning, right now, before, before, before you went to sleep, you'd, you'd jot together the worst plan in the world and uh, every day after that you just start fixing it fixing it making sure this changes 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 this needs to happen actually because- George, George, I, think, I think that's a really really good um let's say mental exercise if you actually do it if you actually do it because like, let's say six months down the line to have your goals like to have a cool 10 million i guarantee like the effort that you would go to like number one what, would, what, what are the things that you would instantly adopt you'd instantly adopt number one Okay, you'd instantly just get organized. You get organized, you'd be like, okay, I need to weigh myself every day. That's what you do, number one. You'd be like, wins every day. Oh, I don't feel like it. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, I'm afraid of this game. It's like, there's fucking 10 million quid on the line. Shut the fuck up. What do I weigh today? Yeah, what are, exactly. That's what you'd be like, okay, why? Because it's really important. Okay. Success. Then, okay, okay. Then, number two, okay. What foods do I like? What meals can I have? How much calories can I have? How many calories can I have to make this so I can hit there pretty early and make sure that I can sustain it at that point? That's what you'd be asking next. You'd be like, how do I do that? Okay. How much protein do I need per day? How much carbs do I need per day? How much fat do I need per day? You would do that straight I away. Probably, I should probably take a nutrition course. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that yeah, might be a good shout. There's loads of them online. They're only some of them are fucking fifteen euro in the right places. But I mean, but, but it's all of a sudden you're, you're, you're way of thinking. It's you what you already know, George. <laughs> but you, but you, but you'd start looking for opportunities to be successful. Is the point? Is like it would start exactly. changing from like, oh, I'm not sure if I can. To how is this getting done? Like, what do I need to take on in order for this to happen? Because I want ten million. 
But here's that you don't want maybe. It's like, I don't really mind if I'm, you know, kind of half miserable the rest of my life because people have low self-esteem and low passion, low drive and low energy for their own life, but they don't have low passion, low energy and low motivation for pleasure. And 10 million brings a whole pile of pleasure and security. And that's really what we, we want as human beings. And if you have never had, you know, like good self-esteem and pride in your work and pride in who you are, it's like that's a very hard thing to cultivate. And that's where you kind of have to really believe in yourself and believe in a vision for the future and want to be passionate about it. And if you don't have that, we'll just imagine it's 10 million and you'll go after that. Well, again, something that might be more motivational for you than the 10 million is like, let's say, Joe, the social status you'll get by having an incredible body. Um, Joe, maybe the respect that you'll get from yourself. Um, maybe the the people who will find you attractive and um, the cool stuff that you can be able to do. Maybe the likes you're going to get on Instagram. Whatever you can find to, to motivate you, it's really, really important that you actually have a clear vision of how it will make you feel when you actually get it because then you are pulled towards that and then on top of that have a wee idea of what it would look like if you just gave it all up if you just stopped how fat you get the guilt the shame the isolation that you feel the the judgment from other people how people just would you know, just be a little bit nice to you about it it's like oh no you're not that fat it's fine no i love you just the way you are all this sort of stuff as well like and you know their secret line those little moments if you can clearly articulate like that and have that sense of disgust and shame where you're like oh i don't like that and then you have the the belief and the optimism and the positivity towards the positive one but then all of a sudden you're maximally motivated you're running away from the negative one you're being pulled towards the positive one and you're just uh, on a wee streamline upwards into your goals which is really good listen to you listen to this podcast i believe in you you can do it but you know where you should start you should hit your protein hit your protein it's, it. it's the easiest place to start all right we'll leave it there for this week guys chris wrap it up all right guys so uh thank you very much for listening uh hopefully you found it entertaining Make sure to like the video or uh, save it on Spotify. Make sure you follow us on all of the Instagrams and all the social media. FF Chris M here, and our brand is FF Movement Coach. And that is us good to go. Thank you very much for your time, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any topics that you'd like us to discuss or that you want us to delve into or even take the piss out of, just leave them in some of the comments on the YouTube t- channel or send us some wee messages on the Instagram pages, and we will get back to you there. All right, peace and love.